Hi there, I'm Robert Dudzik and welcome you to my new video, How I Do What I Do For. This video is a little bit different than the previous one because I just don't want to repeat myself and just showing you all kinds of different things what I was recording in the studio, then move to the field. This video, I, I, I want to do more personal to you and if you want to learn, this video is for you because I will show you how I go record my sounds on the field and after I will show you what's happened to the sounds, how I export and import them in my workstation, how I mix them, what's the purpose of using my microphone setups. And I will show you what I'm using to get the big cinematic stuff sounds. And I will also show you how my, some of the way how I'm designing my sounds. And I will go over my gear, recording gear, and hope you're gonna learn something and you're gonna like and you're gonna enjoy it. All right, so, but before we're gonna jump to the video, I have to tell you something. We filmed all this segment right before the pandemic starting and uh, we went this time to the Antique Steam Engine Museum and uh, where they have a lot of original authentic steam engines and they have actually a lot of great antique shop from like typewriter or telephones or like barber shop, cash registers, cuckoo clocks, all kind of stuff, great stuff. So we went, we spent all day over there filming and recording the sounds and I think so we come with the great material. But when the pandemic started, I was getting a little bit panicked, just like you guys probably and what they're gonna do. So I have to move everything on the side and just focus more on my family and I, I have to put food on the table for my family. So I have to put this project a little bit on the side. So if you watch the video and you're gonna see like, oh, I look a little bit different then I look right now, it's only because the video is like a year and a half, almost like close to two years old. But it was filmed in the 4K and it still looks great. And I said, why not? I want to share this with you and I want to show you everything because it sounds great. So I did some editing, I added other segments and hope you're going to enjoy it. So this is how I do what I do for. So the next step after when I finish recording, I'm bringing my files and I basically import them in my digital workstation, what in this case I'm working on Cubase. So what I do, you have to remember one thing. Uh, remember your settings, what you said, if your files record 48, you got to set your project to 48. If your files record like I did 24 bits 96K, you got to set your project to 96, so it's going to be full transparent. So this is how I do. And the first channel, I import all my center microphones, what is the Rode Shotgun NTG3, what you see in the center. And in the side, next channels, it will be NT6 left and NT6 right. So when you play them right now, the sound line mono like this. And 
everything is sound smaller. But to make them sound bigger, all I have to do right now, just go to the pen and send the pen to the left and this one send to the right. And if I mute this one, the sounds right now stereo wider. And if I add this one microphone right now, I'm having more control and so it's more in your face, but you also see it's way louder. So I'm bringing this thing and basically it will give me the control how much sound do I want in my face or how much sound I just want to be in the back. It's, it's all up to you. And the whole concept of recording like this come and free microphones come to me from when I was a drummer, when I recorded in studios or playing the concerts, you always have the microphone directly on your drum, but the drum microphone was just sounds very plain, very dead. There was no ambience, nothing that there was just calm. There was no room basically in the studio, very dry. So the engineer was usually giving me like the room microphones and overheads and basically mixing with them, you bring in the drums, sounds bigger. So same thing, same concept. I have the beautiful center sound of the microphone, but well, it sounds pretty clean when you listen, but I want the sounds bigger. So I'm adding this to stereo microphone and when you add them on, it just sounds bigger right away. But now there's another thing. Okay, I know you probably say, then you hear some noises and this thing. So what I can do about the noise? So my trick is instead using noise reduction, but I actually, I'm using the Isotope RX, but I'm using a very critical stuff and I'm trying not using if I don't have to, but there are a lot of times when you're getting clicks, spikes and other stuff and you just have to use it or like rumble or something. Then I can use it, but in this case, the sounds are pretty clean. So all I have to do, it's funny. Again, drum technique, what I was using, I'm using gate and the drum gate, if I activate, it's work exactly same thing like at the drums. When I hit, I hit the attack of the drums and anything after what I hear is dead. You know, hear this stuff. So I'm not using quality of the sound, but I can control anything what's going after, what's going before. Because remember, all the sounds, the ambience, the noise when you're recording, it's a part actually of the sound. Otherwise, what's the purpose of going recording sounds in the location if you want to make the sounds like you just record this in your room or in the studio? It doesn't make any sense. So you got to capture this originality of the sound because that's the reason why this object that I record or the instrument you record in the studio sound like that because the room and the ambience adding this unique color. So remember, you really don't want to take away from this thing. So now when I add the gate, check this thing out. The gate is working, it's quiet. But when it comes sound, you, you can hear just the sound very clearly with no disintegrate any of other parts of the sound. So you have all the details and look at this, my level is just fine. And again, if I want to have more stereo wide, just bring a little bit this one and move the center, the thing and the level, and you can hear this clear sound. So you really all have, you, you have all these tools and your digital workstation, I'm assuming every program set, have some kind of gate or oh, Cubase have phenomenal gate work for me, fantastic. So this is how I clean and I mix my sounds. But now when I have this thing, what's, what else I can do other, you know, with do with activating, you know, with using the stereo microphones? Well, for the example, I can just send two different channel to like pitch shifting. And when I send to the pitch shift, the automatically with the balance, these two lower microphones gonna play the signal lower and adding basic images more bass to my sound. And this is what you guys are acting, how I'm getting my sound. It's simple. I'm just adding, I'm lowering this thing, lower the, the pitch of the sounds. So I still have the beautiful frequency of the first one, but I'm getting the low and the ends going. And with the balance, how much, how you're mixing, how much pitch you want to have, you can control this thing. So when you play right now, suddenly the sounds become bigger and further. You know what I mean? There's more low, low end, okay. 
it's a little bit too loud, so I like to use in Q-Link. And it's a cool thing because I bring them free over down and I'm hitting. And usually when I'm mixing stuff like this, I try to go to like minus six dB because after the old post, if I'm gonna add stuff to the master, it's gonna bring everything and I don't want my sounds to be squashed. I wanna be sounds the most natural organic. So this is what I do. So I add pitch shift to them. So it's working great, but what else I can do with this thing? How about if I can just send just this two channel to like effects process. So for the example, I love using like eventide stuff, you know, I'm a big fan of the effects. So I use like the different, uh, the crystal reference and I'm gonna activate them right now and watch what's gonna happen to the sounds. Too much. Just enough. But of course, you know, like, you switch your presets and you can create different stereo effects and anything and you can just do crazy stuff. So, so that's the benefits of having, you know, recording this and two sounds. So another cool thing is what I want to show you what I can do with this thing. And one of my final process before I'm sending everything to my next stage when I'm going to edit, I just basically using a little bit of Neutron and the end, and I'm gonna activate this thing. And basically what Neutron, that if you go to the presets, there's production elements and you have the sound effects. It's basically, I'm choosing the first one and look at this, there it's so many of them. What do you wanna do? If you see difference, they're gonna give you a different character, but I'm just using just a little add, little bit definition. So basically what this does to me it just will be out for me just a little bit sculpture equalizer, a little bit compressor and a little bit exciter just to make this sound a little bit brighter and but not too much you don't want to over process but just enough so the sound is for me nice and clear and pretty much it's easy to me to send to the next stage where I'm going to edit files so now you hear my sounds are clear and the big and they're ready to export so Usually when I go export, I will be just go here and I will export this track as a mix down and set to 96. Vintage gear, this is what I did. So I already export this thing and I already edit and I'm assuming you already know how to edit this. So the next stage, I will be close this because I don't need any more noise reduction. I don't need neutron. Everything is all set. So I will close this free instrument and and this time i would like to focus on contact and show you what i'm doing with this instrument so let's bring contact right now and i will teach you how i do my tricks and by the way this is when i was working on damage one with heavy acidity this is how i did a lot of my sounds and i stay using this technique to today so basically you see all my files here I edit them and the sounds beautiful ready to be import so what you're gonna do watch going to new instrument and just open new instrument next thing click on the wrench and go to your map editor and now find out which key you work like which keyboard you have like example like me I have the complete 61 keys and it's showing me this is my first key. So what I want to do, I want to drag all the samples and you see again the N96 and I want to drag them directly right here and the all starting and the C1. So now you see the all corresponding with this thing. So Let's close this thing and I back to this and this is my base stage. And once again, remember, I record all files in 96 and I import them to contact in 96. I tell you why, because when you play with pitch shift, it's very critical. It's very easy to when you go high and we're not using quality of the sound. But if you're going low, 
then the, you starting to see like particles of the sun and it's just not fun. You know what I mean? That the sun's starting to weird. So this is what I do. So I import them and we have all the files here. And now what I would like to do, click on this tune, learn MIDI and my first knob and the keyboard, whatever you have like any control, just click and say learn MIDI. So when I touch it, the MIDI is learned. But now watch the coolest thing, what's happening now. When I hit the one key, sounds like this. You can lower the sounds. And you can be very creative. Or the coolest thing, why important to contact two? Because I can play example two or three sounds at the same time. And look at this, I'm getting combinations of the sounds. So just to give you example, another thing, if I like this thing and how I doing my cinematic stuff very cool way, I just like to use adding to this thing reverb and my reverb to go when I'm doing like cinematic stuff is the Valhalla vintage verb. And I just open just a little bit. You don't want to open too much because it's very powerful reverb. And I will be open right now, reverb, and I'm gonna send and. Did you hear what's happening right now, the sound? And let's maybe add a little more. Gotta activate here, sorry. I activate. And now it's the magic happen. Sorry, because sometimes I'm doing stuff live, so definitely it's too much reverse, I can bring it down. But And you can, of course, like change your preset and it's all the fancy, like you can experiment. Like So you see right now, that's the way how I design my sounds. And of course, when I'm playing with this thing, I'm recording all my sounds as a MIDI file. So when I play back, I can just export this thing and all the sounds with the effects or without whatever I want to do, they just export individually for me. And another thing, like you don't have to use the vintage Valhalla verb, like all the workstation have, and I would strongly recommend it to using like probably like convolution reverb, you know, like reverence and Steinberg is great too, but it's just take more CPU when you're recording video. So for this presentation, that's why I use vintage verb because it's it, it, it's just more stable for me in this case, because it's just take less CPU and recording in the 4K, it's just take a lot of power. <laughs> so anyway, but you don't have to use reverb. You can use flanger, you can use any other effects you want to process them and just play in contact and how I say, you can play many kits you want and you can create anything you want and you can just create a of sounds. So that's the way how I'm using my sounds to create the cinematic stuff and now you see how I edit everything how I import what's going on to the sound. And now let's move to the next stage where I'm going to go over my recording gear, what I was using in the recording. Now let's go over my recording gear, what I was using in this video. And I'm finally happy to show you my pistol grip because a lot of people it's keep asking me what it is. And basically 
that's my pistol grip what I'm using and and the center how I say I'm using Rod NTG3 shotgun microphone and I have to be honest with you I choose Rod because when I was rec working on damage one I was recording the Rod NTG2 and that just has so much low end then I say hey it's got to be better NTG3 <laughs> But it's phenomenal microphone and it gives me a lot of low end, a lot of punch, and a lot of details. So that's why I choose to using this thing. And on the side, I'm using two condenser mics, and that's the Rode NT6. And I choose them too because they don't have great response and recording. But they're also small. The whole body of the microphones basically is in the end of the cable when I'm attached to my recorder. So for me, like spending sometimes I was recording weight. It's critical thing. So they all attach and you see everything is connected to this pistol grip. And now I'm gonna reveal what exactly the pistol grip and a little bit story about this thing, okay? So my pistol grip, it's the regular rod standard pistol grip and this go PG2R and it's available everywhere and it's kind of this cable on the end and it's connected right away. Actually, what's good for me when I connect these cables and it's less things to worry. So basically I set all my cables inside and I just wrap them around so they're not fluffy around everywhere and this is what I do. So that's my pistol grip. But how do I get the stereo bar mount to this thing? Okay, if you look up close here, like right here, there's two little screws and this one, all you have to do is unscrew them. Then I come with the idea I want to make the bar. So that's the original print of the design, what I did of my stereo bar. I don't know if you're going to see this thing, but I will post this on my Instagram. So if you want to see details of this thing, follow me on Instagram. And this is where I'm going to post this picture of this, my blueprint and you're going to have all the dimensions and you can do on your own. So it's really cool. So it's pretty much, we print this thing. I go to a friend of mine who has 3D printer and basically he turned this thing to reality in my dream and he print this. So it's two pieces with the little dots in the center and you can connect them together. Oh, sorry. That's just for purpose so they're not sliding. And boom, here you go. That's the pistol grip. And you have two, two little holes to add the screws so you're mounting in the center. So if you, if I take the microphone out, you can actually see how this thing is mounted. So it's right here. That's the piece. Two screws attached and screw between them. And it works. So that's nothing magic, no more speculation. This is how it's done. Simple. You can buy this, you know, you just have to make this. So sometimes you just have to be a little bit creative, you know, think outside the box. And this will want to make you go outside of the comfort zone and use this thing. The next thing what I'm use, my headphones monitors. I like them, the Tascam, the TH MX2. And I use them all the time. You see them all my videos and not because of Tascam, it's because the comfortable, they're pretty cheap and if I lose them, drop them or sometimes something happen, I'm not going to complain, you know what I mean, because they're very easy to replace and actually they're very comfortable in my ears, they cover my ears well, they have great sound, very nice low end, what I'm looking for and they isolate my ear and my ears not getting tired, have them sometimes for a couple hours in my ears. So that's the thing. The next thing, my recorder, what I'm using is the Tascam DR680 MK2. It's small, not heavy recorder. It works for me for years and all my files I record 92 kilohertz and 24 bit and it's a track recorder. So this is where I plug my mics and it's SSD card and, and it's just working on there. Like it never let me down. So thanks Tascam for making this. It's really great recorder and I'm using this for a long, long time already. And my back what I'm using is from the KTEC and it's Stingray bag and it's phenomenal because you can customize these bags to any way you want. The recorder actually, same here, 
like a suck and you grab and you close and you're ready to go and you open on the side this and you have access to connect all your cables and so many pockets so I have directly access to this thing if I want to change battery or something I can go directly from this thing oh and it's coming even with the waterproof case what is great thing because you never know sometimes raining so that's my gear what I'm using oh one more thing and the mics when I'm going sometimes when it's windy you see this fuzzy things you probably already know but oh, this one here from the last recording I call them dead cats the windscreens and I put them on so it's eliminate all the noises from the wind and just capture great sound so that's my recording here so there you have it thanks for watching and hope you learned something today maybe I give you some inspiration and you can create your own stuff and you can put your own spin and anything what I show you and you know what be honest with you don't be afraid of the copy whatever I do or something because I did the same thing in the beginning and the more you do copy of somebody you're gonna learn your tools you're gonna learn your craft and in the end you're gonna become with your own sound just like I did so I wish you all the best thanks again for watching and if you like this video do me some more favor click this button on the bottom and subscribe to my channel because there is a lot of new videos coming very soon now when we're back to the normal <laughs> I have a lot of plans and already did a lot of pre-filming for a lot of stuff. So there will be a lot of new stuff come. So if you want to learn and you don't want to miss anything, click subscribe. And if you want to know daily what I'm doing, follow me on Instagram. Every day I post like video clips and I'm showing everything what's going on in my life with the recording, what I'm using and how I'm using. So you'll be up to date with everything. So thank you for watching and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye.